Next one is associative classification. It's a classification by association rule analysis. You can include the concepts of association rule mining here, uh, including the frequent item set mining and uh, the rule generation. In many studies, associative classification has been found to be more accurate than some traditional classification methods such as C4.5. Uh, which is a decision tree uh, method. Uh, there are three main methods for associative classification including CBA, CMAR and CPAR. We will see what are the three methods for associative classification and these methods differ primarily in the approach used for frequent item set mining and in how the derived rules are analyzed and used for classification. The first one is CBA, that is Classification Based Association, uh, which is one of the earliest and simplest algorithms for associative classification. Uh, it uses an iterative approach to frequent item set mining, similar to that of a priori. CBA was empirically found to be more accurate than C4.5 on a good number of data sets. Next method is CMAR that is classification based on multiple association rules. It differs from CBA in its strategy for frequent item set mining and its construction of the classifier. It also employs several rule pruning strategies with the help of a tree structure for efficient storage and retrieval of rules. CMAR adopts a variant of the FP growth algorithm to find the complete set of rules satisfying the minimum confidence and minimum support threshold. You can compare CBA and CMAR uh, with the following points. CMAR had slightly higher average accuracy in comparison with CBA. Its runtime, scalability and use of memory were found to be more efficient. CBA and CMAR adopt methods of frequent item set mining to generate candidate association rules which include all conjunctions of attribute value pairs satisfying minimum support. These rules are then examined and a subset is chosen to represent the classifier. However, such methods generate quite a large number of rules. So, these are the comparison between CPA and CMAR method. Next one is CPAR, classification based on predicted association rule. It takes a different approach to rule generation based on a rule generation algorithm for classification known as FOIL. FOIL builds rules to distinguish positive tuples from negative tuples. Positive tuples say having class bias computer equal to yes and negative tuples such as bias computer no. The accuracy of CPAR on numerous data sets was shown to be close to that of CMAR. Since CPAR generates far fewer rules than CMAR, it shows much better efficiency with large sets of training data. Uh, associative classification offers an alternative to classification schemes by building rules based on conjunctions of attribute value pairs that occur frequently in data. So these are all about associative classification. Uh, you can add uh, enough points that is uh, from association rule mining and that can be used for classification. Next one is lazy learners. Uh, this is quite interesting. Lazy learners is also known as learning from your neighbors. Uh, all classification methods we uh, discussed so far are eager learners. We are uh, distinguishing between the two terms, eager learners and lazy, lazy learners. Eager learners, when given a set of training tuples, will construct a generalization, that is classification model, before receiving new or test tuples to classify. So, uh, all the algorithms we have discussed so far uh, are of type eager learners. Um, we will generate the classification model based on training tuples before we receive uh, a new or test tuples to classify. We can think of the learned model 
as being ready and eager to classify previously unseen tuples or the new tuples. In lazy approach, the learner instead waits until the last minute before doing any model construction in order to classify a given test tuple. Uh, until uh, it, it is given a test tuple, it will not um, build a classification model. That is the lazy approach. That is, when given a training tuple, a lazy learner simply stores it uh, and waits until it is given a test tuple. Only when it says the test tuple, does it perform generalization in order to classify the tuple based on its similarity to the stored training tuples. Unlike eager learning methods, lazy learners do less work when a training tuple is presented and more work when making a classification or prediction. Because lazy learners store the training tuples or instances, they are also referred to as instance-based learners even though all learning is essentially based on instances. So I hope you understand uh, the difference between eager learners and lazy learners. And these are having some limitation as well as uh, some advantages. Uh, limitation is uh, when making a classification or prediction, lazy learners can be computationally expensive. They require efficient storage techniques and are well suited to implementation on parallel hardware. Uh, advantages are lazy learners however naturally support incremental learning. They are able to model complex decision spaces having uh, hyperpolygonal shapes that may not be is as easy describable by other learning algorithms. So these are the advantages of using uh, lazy learners. There are two examples uh, for uh, lazy learners we will discuss about k-nearest neighbor classifiers and case-based reasoning classifiers. k-nearest neighbor classifiers uh, were previously used in uh, pattern recognition uh, but uh, by the invention of parallel computing and uh, hardware uh, the method, this method is uh, popular among uh, data mining uh, classification. Nearest neighbor classifiers are based on learning by analogy that is by comparing a given test tuple with a training tuples that are similar to it. The training tuples are described by n attributes. Each tuple represents a point in an n dimensional space. In this way all of the training tuples are stored in an n dimensional pattern space. When given an unknown tuple, a k-nearest neighbor classifier searches the pattern space for the k-training tuples that are closest to the unknown tuple. These k-training tuples are the k-nearest neighbors of the unknown tuple. Closeness is defined in terms of a distance metric such as Euclidean distance. The closeness is measured um, using a distance metric uh, known as Euclidean distance. Uh, the Euclidean distance between two points or tuples uh, are calculated using the uh, following equation. Uh, here x1 equal to uh, x11, x12 up to x1n and x2 is another tuple with values x21, x22 up to x2n. Uh, we can calculate the distance between x1 and x2 that are the distance between two tuples uh, values. We are calculating uh, the uh, distance or the difference between the values that is x1i minus x2i whole square uh, and it is summed uh, and we are uh, finding the uh, square root of the value. Typically we normalize the values of each attribute before using it. This helps prevent attributes with initially large ranges such as income from overweighing attributes with initially smaller ranges. So normalization is also uh, required in, in, in case of this particular uh, type of classification. For k-nearest neighbor classification, the unknown tuple is assigned the most common task among its k-nearest neighbors. When k equal to 1, the unknown tuple is assigned the class of the training tuple that is closest to it in pattern space. 
Nearest neighbor classifiers can also be used for prediction, that is, to return a real valued prediction for a given unknown tuple. In this case, the classifier returns the average value of the real valued labels associated with the k nearest neighbors of the unknown tuple. A good value for k can be determined experimentally. Initially, uh, we will start with k equal to 1, then k equal to 2, like that, uh, we will move on. So, um, the value for k can be determined experimentally. Nearest neighbor classifiers use distance based comparisons that intrinsically assign equal weight to each attribute, therefore, suffer from poor accuracy when given noisy or irrelevant attributes. The method, however, has been modified to incorporate attribute weighting and the pruning of uh, noisy data tuples. The choice of distance metric can be critical. Uh, we can use another distance measure that is uh, called as Manhattan distance or other distance measures uh, can also be used. Nearest neighbor classifiers can be extremely slow when classifying test tuples. The second method under this category is case-based reasoning, which is abbreviated as CBR. Uh, CBR classifiers use a database of problem solutions to solve new problems. Unlike the nearest neighbor classifiers, which store training tuples as points in Euclidean, um, Euclidean distance space um, or Manhattan distance space, CBR stores the tuples or cases for problem solving as complex symbolic descriptions. Uh, the applications of CBR include problem resolution for customer service help desk, where cases describe product related diagnostic problems. CBR uh, also been applied to areas such as engineering and law, where cases are either technical designs or legal rulings respectively. Uh, medical education is another area for CBR where patient case histories and treatments are used to, to, to help diagnose and treat new patients. So these are the application areas of CBR. So this is also one, one of the important classification method uh, and can be used um, in many applications, um, especially in medical field. When given a new case to classify, a case-based reasoner will first check if an identical training case exists. If one is found, then the accompanying solution to that case is returned. There are certain challenges in CBR, including finding a good similarity metric, example for matching subgraphs and suitable methods for combining solutions. Uh, the second challenge, uh, the selection of salient features for indexing training cases and the development of efficient indexing techniques. A trade-off between accuracy and efficiency evolves as the number of stored cases becomes very large. As this number increases, the case-based reasoner becomes more intelligent.